Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back to my channel. And today I thought we could talk about taking photographs. And this could be photographs of maybe your product that you're going to be putting up on Etsy, or maybe it's a blog post or something on Instagram or Facebook, you name it. So um, what I thought we would talk about is first a couple of, of maybe some bad examples, some things that we should avoid. So here is our first image and I took all of these photographs with my cell phone. Um, I didn't use my big girl camera, I just used a cell phone because most people have a cell phone or can at least get one and take some photographs of it, of whatever they need to take photographs of. And um, most of them take pretty decent pictures. There are just some things that we need to keep in mind. In this first photograph, what is it that you see that is detracting from the photo? So the lighting is great. The lighting is even, it's not harsh, it's not, it, the detail is good on the book, um, but it's cluttered. There's just stuff sitting everywhere. So when you're taking photographs, please be mindful of your background and declutter your background. And it could be stuff on your work surface like this that just doesn't need to be there that would take you know just a minute to remove these items and just have the book there. Um, it could be maybe your background as far as, you know, if you're in the living room and there's a TV in the background and you see the TV or, um, you know, the dog on the floor, which can be cute, but sometimes they do things that aren't cute. <laughs> Just be, be mindful of your background and try to declutter as much as possible when people look at photographs, if they're going to buy something, a... Um, a less cluttered photograph is always an easy bet. There are some things that I, I will example here in a minute that um, have an exception, but um, yeah, try to keep your background nice and clear. Okay, so this one, the background is nice and clear. It's just sitting on a piece, this is like gift wrap on the floor. That's all it is, is gift wrap. But what's our problem? So our problem is, is that I allowed the phone camera to use flash. And while flash can be a cool, edgy, trendy thing to use, for example, check out Beyonce's last um, maternity shoot for her last baby. Um, that photographer knew what he was doing. <laughs> um, we're not photographing Beyonce. Well, good thing, because wow, the pressure, right? Um, most of the time, unless somebody knows exactly what they're doing, unless they're a photographer and they know exactly how to use flash, it is best not to use flash. Um, so many things can go wrong. As you can see in this picture, it's just, I mean, it's a simple background. The item is sitting on the floor. The, you know, I put the phone right above it to get just a nice even shot, but the flash went off. And so it's, it's contrasty and it's glary and the lighting is horrible and it just detracts from the item in the photograph. So let's take um, note of some good examples just by changing a couple of things how we can get a better photograph. So here is the same book without the flash. I tilted the, can the phone back a little bit so that you could see more of the edge of the book too, but I turned off the flash. The lighting is not great. These are unedited photographs straight from the phone. Um, for those of you that don't have editing software or you don't know how to use editing software, just by having decent bright light and not, not sunshine shining on something, but just a nice bright window um, where there's some nice, even, diffused light coming through. You can even put something on the floor, on the table, take a picture of it, and it's gonna be a lot better than trying to use flash somewhere. Um, so yeah, so there's this one. Here is the same book, but I shot it just up and down, straight up and down. Nice, even lighting, 
um, on another piece of paper, basically, just laying on the floor near a bright window. Here is the same book sitting on, um, it's a wood table is what it is. So even wood can be cool. It doesn't have to be a pure white background. It doesn't have to be, you know, flowery. This is just a wood table. Um, these are some old receipts. Thank you, Anna. They're incredible. And as you can, as you will see in the next few photographs, I'm starting to add in props to make more of a vignette instead of just a simple product photo. This is going to become more of vignette photos. And so a vignette is when you're using props along with the product that you are showcasing. So here's just a few um, receipts, old receipts that are in with this book, in with the product. And sometimes in the uh, description box underneath whatever, if you're selling the item, um, if you're selling the item, please put a little disclaimer that the props in the video are not included in on the sale. Um, some people will think that that is part of the sale. So always put that in there if you decide to use a vignette what, that the listing is just for the book. But think what a cute Instagram post this would be or Facebook post or if you have a blog or whatever it is that you like to post on, Tumblr. Um, adding a few extra props is never a bad idea. Here's the next one. And you're thinking, okay, I don't have a great wooden table. I don't have any gift wrap. I don't have anything nowhere pretty to put anything. Well, I know you have tea stained paper. <laughs> I know you all have tea stained paper. Don't even tell me you don't have tea stained paper because I know you got it. So here is the same book. Um, it is opened to a page, a couple of pages. And this vignette is laid upon just some sheets of tea stained, coffee stained, whatever paper, just layered around as a backdrop. They work because they are monotone, evenly toned, they aren't garish, they don't take away from the things that are laying on top of it. Um, again, this is another example of a vignette and I've added more items here. I've complicated the vignette but you know what, sometimes it works. And in Etsy um, listings, we are allowed, I think it's up to a dozen photos now, 10 or 12 photos now. So, you know, you can add vignette photos. Maybe this is your, your thumbnail. Maybe this is your primary image. And then the next image is just the item itself. But sometimes vignettes are very eye-catching because they evoke a feeling and they evoke um, a time and a place. And so sometimes that will bring emotion for your product and kind of like nostalgia. So sometimes that's a good thing. So here is just a simple, non-edited, straight out of the phone vignette um, on my kitchen table on a pile of coffee stained paper. Oh, and that's my, my dad and my mom, and that's my dad's sister and her husband that was on their wedding day. It's so cute. Okay, sorry, had, had to say that. Okay, moving on. So maybe you're like, okay, I can't shoot straight down. I need to be able to shoot against something, but I don't have a great wall. I don't, okay, so this is the exact same thing except I took a piece of that of that gift wrap that we used in that other photograph and I attached it to a piece of foam core board. You can get foam core board very, very inexpensively at uh, craft and art supply stores. I think I got this at Joann's or Hobby Lobby for just, I think it's like three bucks. And they have nice big sheets and, and they come in all kinds of colors. I usually get white. Um, the white can be great just to use on the floor. Even if you have carpeting, you can lay down a piece of foam core board, put your item on it, boom, you got a backdrop. This though, I attached that gift wrap to it. And then I propped up this foam core board with the gift wrap. There's a big wooden bowl behind it, holding it upright like a wall.
and then we've got our tea stain paper and our vignette. I backed up a little bit, tilted the phone so that it's more of a, like you're sitting in front of the book in a chair. It looks more like that kind of a viewpoint. Um, but yeah, so you can even push a table up against a wall if you need to and create a, a backdrop if you need a vertical instead of just a horizontal surface. Okay, now this is an edited photograph of that first of that first vignette where we're just shooting almost straight down. Um, on your phones, on your cell phones, if you go to either the um, um, I, the Apple Store or um, the Microsoft, the Google Play, you can get free photo editing software. And there are different ones that you can get and they all do different things. There's one called Aviary. Um, I think even Adobe Photoshop Express is free. So there's all kinds of free photo editing software where you just, you know, all I did was I brightened it up a little bit. So I pulled up the exposure. I upped the contrast a little bit and that's all I did. It just kind of creates a little bit more punch to the photo. And um, so you can edit those photos right in your camera, I mean right in your phone, and um, then you can load them up. Here is that photograph um, on that paper that I took before, and this one is brightened up. So very simple, very easy to do, um, free in your phone. Okay guys, well I hope you found some of those tips um, helpful. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comment section below and I will see what I can do to answer those. Um, hopefully we will be able to do some real world type of photographing in a video soon. Um, I will need to get my friend, she's out of town right now, <laughs> but I have a friend of mine that is a photographer and she can help me film so she can film me. <laughs> and um, so that would be kind of cool to be able to do some real world examples, set up some vignettes in real world time so you can see what's happening. And I think that would be cool too. So that is on the list and I hope to do that very soon. But until then, I hope this little video helped you out with some ideas. And um, yeah, thank you guys for um, hanging out with me today. And I will catch you really, really soon in the next video. Bye guys.